Today in the news, we got all about upcoming GPUs. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before that, let me take a second to thank today's video sponsor, WhoKeys. WhoKeys is where you can buy keys like this one for Windows 10 Pro. Get yourself a license with that link down in the description and click buy now and enter the code BTS25 for 25% off. And then you just submit your order. And once you're through with your payment and you receive your key, go to your computer, click on the Windows button, type in activate and update or change your product key. It's that simple. First, let's talk and video. We've been hearing through the grapevines that the company is planning to revive its last generation Turing-based RTX 2060. I mean, we've known that for months, but the only thing that we actually knew about it was that it would have twice the VRAM at 12 gigs of GDDR6. Well, now we got some specs and it's more than just a doubling of the memory. The regular RTX 2060 has 1920 CUDA cores and this many RT and Tensor cores. Well, this new 2060 12 gig version would match the specs of the 2060 Super, 2176 CUDA cores, and of course, an array of RT and Tensor cores. So essentially, it would be wiser to call this an RTX 2060 Super 12 gig. Now, if we look at the performance, the RTX 2060 Super is around 10% slower than an RTX 3060 based on the Ampere architecture. So it's going to be interesting to see how Nvidia plans on pricing this GPU. If it's a sub $300 card, then it might well be worth it for gamers, but we'll get back to that in a moment. As for other specs, sources at videocards.com have seen anywhere from uh, 1650 to 1690 megahertz for overclocked models, and the TDP would be higher than both the 2060 and 2060 Super variant at 184 watts, probably thanks to the extra memory. The only difference from the 2060 Super, apart from the uh, memory size, is the bus width for the memory. It's 192 bits as opposed to 256 bits. Honestly, it's not a big deal. It might deter crypto miners though, since its hash rate will be severely limited compared to the 2060 Super, which was a pretty good miner. Now, I said earlier that it would be around 10% slower than an RTX 3060. That's true, but it would definitely be worse in anything other than uh, rastered performance, so ray tracing or tensor workloads, given the fact that, you know, Ampere is a more advanced architecture. Another GPU coming from Nvidia is the desktop variant of the RTX 3050. Now, if you remember correctly, there were no RTX 2050 in the previous generations. What we had was basically ray tracing and tensor less GTX GPUs. The top of the line at the time for these 16 series cards was the GTX 1660 Ti, followed very closely by the refreshed GTX 1660 Super variant. Well, this new RTX 3050 would allegedly beat the 1660 Super. No word on it beating the 1660 Ti, but honestly, the Ti and Super are so close to each other that it wouldn't surprise me if it beat both. And according to the rumors, it would not beat the upcoming RTX 2060 12 gig. This means that it's not really there to compete with AMD's 6600 series, but rather the upcoming RX 6500 series equipped with Navi 24 chips. The 16 series from Nvidia were a hit for budget builders. And I know, I mean, the current GPU situation is pretty bleak, but at least you know that a lower priced GPU with ray tracing is incoming. The 2060 12 gig is rumored to be released in about a week and a half on December 7th. As for the RTX 3050, the rumored window for release is Q2 of next year, so in about four to five months. Next up, we got Intel in the news, and the company might have a very different approach to its GPU release schedule when compared to the competition, so AMD and Nvidia. Now, for AMD, it's always been a bit inconsistent. I mean, for a while, all we had were refreshes of the RX 480, re and re-released, and then we got the 5700 XT, just out of the blue. And then a year and a half later, we got the 6800 series, and then 
a couple months after that, we got the 6700 series. So about two years in between the 5700 and 6700. And that's not mentioning availability, but we're not factoring this into uh, the conversation. As for Nvidia, it's been a pretty consistent two year cycle between generations. Two years and a little extra. So what's different about Intel's goals? Well, just like in the CPU market, it looks like the blue team will be releasing stuff way faster at a higher cadence. As is, we're currently waiting for Intel's Alchemist series of GPUs. Their first generation would be released mid next year. The company also revealed the next couple of code names for their GPU generations. We have Alchemist, then Battle Mage, then Celestial, and lastly, Druid. Well, according to Intel's Arc community advocate over at the company, the fourth generation, so that would be Druid, is targeting a release for 2025. This means that Intel would release a whole GPU generation every year until then. That's pretty intense and impressive if they actually manage to do that. Oh, by the way, I just realized that the first letter of each name is in alphabetical order, you know, Alchemist, Battle Mage, Celestial, blah, blah, blah. So I wonder what the E stands for. What do you guys think? My guess would be Enchanter, maybe. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. You know what, click here too. There's gonna to be something else. All right, take care. Stay frosty. I heard my finger, my, what's it called? Hand knee, arm knee, <laughs> elbow, crack, and my shoulder crack. And then we got the 5700 series. Ow. <laughs> Did you play your tongue? Yeah. <laughs>